Hey there, welcome to a Mike's Collection quick review. Um, usually I do longer, full-length, hour-long videos, but for a quick review, I'm hoping to try to do a review of this figure in 10 or 15 minutes or so. Let's see if I accomplish that. Anyway, today I'm going to be talking about Super 7's new iconic pose, Conan, or you could call it Wave 2 Conan. Um, it doesn't really have a name other than Conan the Barbarian, but uh, yeah, I just picked him up the other day, and I'm eager to talk about him. So before we get into this specific figure, I just want to give you a little bit of background. So Super 7 uh, announced back in 2019 that they had the license to do um, figures based on the Arnold Schwarzenegger Conan movies. So at Toy Fair in 2019, they revealed this Conan figure. And I think this figure looks awesome. And it got a lot of fans excited. And we were all eager to know when we could buy this figure. Um, and to be honest, we still don't know when or even if we'll ever get that figure um, because the first um, wave of Conan figures consisted of four figures and it was Conan, uh, Thulsa Doom, and Thulsa's two henchmen. And the Conan in that first wave was Pit Fighter Conan from the brief scene in the first movie where he's kind of like a gladiator and so he's got this helmet with a spike on the top and he's got this big furry coat. It's not what I would consider a very like iconic look. Like if you're a hardcore Conan completist and you want him in every single look he ever wore, then sure, you might want to add that to your shelf. But if you just want like a good iconic Conan, that is definitely not one I would think. It wasn't for me anyway. So I passed on that first wave. Then wave two actually only consisted of this figure and it is meant to recreate the iconic pose of Conan kind of doing his whole thing with his sword there. And uh, we'll take a look at this figure and we'll see if he accomplishes that. Uh, but I initially passed on this figure. Uh, I didn't necessarily need a figure based on that one pose. Um, and I figured there'd probably be a war paint version coming. And sure enough, in wave three, there was war paint Conan and a new version of Thulsa Doom. And I pre-ordered both of those figures. Those figures haven't uh, shipped yet. I think we're still a few months out from getting both of those figures. But I kind of thought that would be the only movie Conan I bought. Now, mind you, if they do eventually release that 2019 figure that they previewed, I'll buy that too. And that's another reason why I held off on buying this one, because I thought if I get that one, that would kind of make this one redundant. But I still would have wanted the war paint version anyway. However, even though I didn't pre-order this figure, it showed up at my local comic shop the other day. And once I saw it in hand, I kind of just caved. I just like buying new toys, and this guy actually looked really cool. So I picked him up, and now we're going to review him. So without any further ado, let's get into that. So here is Conan inside of the box. Now, it might look rather plain. It's just a big brown box, but it's actually pretty nice. Um, it's got this very like leathery texture all over it. So you can kind of run your finger over that, and you'll feel the texture in there. And then the name... Conan the Barbarian with the sword that's kind of etched in there with this like reflective kind of gold paint so you can see how it catches the light so that's really nice and then just subtly here it's a different pattern on this box here and you see the name Conan so yeah it looks pretty nice the sides are pretty simple there's really nothing on either of the sides there that's just plain brown but then on the back we've got the uh, sword or the hilt of the sword at least in that same reflective kind of gold and so that's really cool there's a lot of detail in there including this skull at the top so yeah really nice outer box and uh now the other conan figure i have is the uh the comic based conan and it uh, so it's from a different line technically like these are the conan movie figures that's the comic based figure but they're all part of super seven's ultimates line so they all have the same style of box but uh, here's the box I have for the uh, the comic figure. So you can see how much brighter this one was. And it's very cool in its own right. And it's very suitable for a comic book figure. But I think this one really suits uh, the look of the movie. I think even like when the DVD came out of the movie, it had the same kind of pattern, the same brown with the texture on it on the DVD case. So that's very cool and consistent. This one here, it had a lot of nice graphics on the side. And then when you slid the slip sleeve off you would find the figure inside now obviously this figure i've had for months so i already have the figure out for display but this box here works the exact same 
there's the slip sleeve and you slide that off like so and there's our Conan figure inside so you see here the outer box it's still got kind of a leathery look to it like there's still some kind of texture uh, kind of just drawn into it there's no you can't feel that there but it still looks like it's supposed to be kind of canvassy or something like that you see the uh, the logo Conan the Barbarian and there's the figure for accessories so obviously we'll take a closer look at these once we get them open. But you see he's got his sword there, he's got an alternate head, and he's got an extra set of hands. So he's got the fist or kind of the closed hands that enable him to hold his sword. And then he's got these open hands. And then he's also got this like uh, necklace here as well. Side of the box, pretty plain, not much to see there. And then on the back of the box, we get this symbol here. I'm not entirely sure what that means. And then we've got a bit of a bio here for Conan as well. So feel free to give the video a pause if you'd like to read that. So that is our look at Conan inside of the box. Now let's pop this guy open and take a look at him. So here is Conan outside of the box. And my first impression is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this figure. So uh, you can see here he's got a nice physique. It's a good build. Um, if you are a collector of Masters of the Universe Classics figures, you kind of know what to expect here as far as like the size and the proportions of the body here. And uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. And uh, to be honest, I don't mind this head as much either. I was going to talk about that a little bit later, but one of the main reasons I didn't order this figure is because I didn't love this head. And then the thing that finally convinced me to buy it was the fact that there was a secondary head that I planned to display it with. But uh, I actually like this head all right. Like, I think the likeness is actually pretty good. Like, I definitely see Arnie in there. And I don't think the windswept hair looks as awkward as I thought it was going to. I think it actually kind of hangs pretty good. And I kind of dig it. So, uh... First off, let's talk a little bit about the articulation on this guy. Again, it's what you'd expect with any kind of Masters of the Universe classics or any of Super 7's Ultimates figures. So, you know, he's got a crunch there at his torso so he can lean back and lean forward a little bit. Although, yeah, he doesn't seem to want to move forward. So I don't know if you can get him to move forward. He can lean back a little bit. But anyway, he spins at the waist. His elbows here, he's got a good range of movement so they can come, come up and... Just, spin around you know, he's got good balls there um articulation there at the elbow it's just a single elbow joint the wrist it swivels as well it's got the joint there to move forward and back um he's got articulation here at the legs so you can do the, the splits pretty good so you can see what you're looking at in there single joint at the knee so you should be able to get like a good kind of uh, 45 degree angle there uh, the ankles, so like so, I'm blanking on my angles. Is that a 90 degree angle I'm talking about there? Well, either way, it's not quite, it doesn't come quite to a perfect angle, but you see, you see what we're dealing with anyway. And so yeah, the ankles back and forth and swivel. So they can kind of go side to side a little bit there as well. So not bad. Now, uh, one thing to notice that is different from all the, uh, Masters of the Universe Classics figures we get is that his joints on his elbows and on his, and on his knees here are pinless. So like for example if I bring in He-Man here this is how all the Masters of the Universe Classic figures looked. You had that circular pin on their joints and so this guy still moves the same way the articulation hasn't changed but they've got rid of that pin which looks a little better. Even if I bring out the uh, the animated Conan here, you'll see the same thing. So this guy's got the pin in the elbow, the pin in the knee. So that's a nice improvement that they've made here. Now as far as the sculpting goes on this figure, like there's not a whole lot to see. Like he's bare chested and that's pretty standard from what we've seen before. On his wrists, he's got these pretty simple wrist guards. There's not much to see there. His pants, you know, they've got some wrinkles sculpted throughout them, but not a whole lot really going on there. His belt, 
you'll notice there's kind of a, a buckle in the back. And then the most sculpted detail we see here is the fur and the straps around his boots. And that looks all right. And then you'll see the paintwork we're dealing with here. So the paints or the pants have this kind of paint wash over them. So you see this has got kind of like splotchy brown over top of the kind of lighter brown. And it's not the same on each leg, um, which is fine. So I don't know if that's supposed to be kind of shadowing or if it's supposed to be mud from him just being kind of a filthy barbarian. But uh, I think the paint wash works pretty well. As for the body, so there's a bit of a wash on this as well. You'll see kind of different shades of flesh tone. So it's like a little pinker in some spots than others, which kind of helps bring out the definition in the muscles. And uh, just a comment on a couple of uh, like negative things I've seen said about this figure in some other reviews is I've seen people mention that his arms don't quite match the flesh color of his torso. I don't see that at all on my figure. I think they match up perfectly. So that's not to say that it doesn't happen on some figures, but that was something I was a little worried about and it looks fine. Um, if anything, I would say the head maybe looks a little off because it lacks any of this like kind of pinker, more tanned flesh color that you see like on his neck, especially like his neck is quite tan and then his face is a little pale. So that is probably the most standout thing where there's kind of a, you know, that they don't really match up so good. But it's not as noticeable as you, as it might look here on camera. Like when you're just standing standing the figure up for display here, I don't think it looks bad at all, really. I think it all looks pretty good. Now you'll notice he's got the, the necklace here, so that matches the same little logo that we saw on the back of the package. So this necklace is just kind of floating around, and you can remove that. When you take his head off, that would just slide over top. And it's kind of a soft rubber. It's almost, it feels a little delicate, actually. I'd be worried that you could tear that quite easily because it's very just kind of soft and rubbery. Um, now let's talk about the head sculpt. So as I said, the sculpt looks good and the paint looks really good too. I like his eyes. I've seen other reviews where they say he looks sad and I wouldn't say he looks sad. I would say he looks kind of emotionless maybe. Like he doesn't look mad or happy or sad. Uh, if anything, I would maybe have preferred him to look a little angrier. Like with his uh, comic book counterpart here, you can tell this guy's kind of pissed off about something. Whereas this guy looks a little bit more contemplative. But uh, yeah, the windswept hair, it does look pretty good. So there you go. So that's the basic figure. Now let's look at those accessories a little bit closer. So he has the two open hands. And the main reason he has those is so that he can create the iconic pose, which we'll do here in a moment. He has the other necklace. So again, this is just really soft rubber, very pliable. And this one here is more just like a little stone with a symbol on it. And again, I, it's been a while. I don't know the significance of these. I don't know if he had two different medallions in the movie or what, I don't remember, but, uh, Somebody that's a little bit more of a hardcore fan than me might uh, really be happy that there's the two different necklaces. Uh, the sword. So the sword's got lots of nice detail in it. So you see, just like on the packaging, there's the skull at the top of the hilt. You know, it's got different paint colors. You get kind of the tan handle here with the silver and a nice black wash to help bring out that detail. And then there's no black wash on the blade. So yeah, it's a pretty good looking sword. And I have uh, seen other reviews where they say this is a little oversized and it probably is um, compared to what he actually held in the movie, but I think it actually works okay for the figure. I don't think it's anything too crazy. Now, uh, as far as holding this, um, so that's what these hands are for. Now they do feel a little tight. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get this handle into his hand without heating it up first, um, which is not something that I, I love to have to do. It seems to be coming a little bit more commonplace. Like when I get like some Ninja Turtle figures from NECA or when I get some Mythic Legions figures from the Four Horsemen, I almost always have to take my hair dryer to them so I can loosen up their joints in order to pose them 
or to get the accessories in their hands. So I will try to get his sword in his hand in a moment and I'll let you know if I was able to do it with or without heat. And then the last accessory we're gonna look at is the other head. Now this one is also very like lacking expression. This one maybe looks a little bit sad to me, but uh, that might make a little bit more sense. Uh, if I'm remembering the movie correctly, I think at the point when he had this type of crown thing and he had his hair this long was at the very start of the movie where there's a transition shot where he gets kind of put into a prison and it starts off where he's like a young kid and he's pushing this uh, big wooden device just making it spin and it, then it kind of transitions into him being a fully grown man pushing the same device to show the passage of time. And I think this is the head from that scene because that's where his hair is really long because he's been obviously stuck attached to this thing for like 10 years or so. And uh, I do like this head and I do think it will be the one that I display this figure with on my shelf. But uh, I don't know, maybe once I pop it on there I might feel differently, but uh, I do like the look of it. Okay, so let's try to get uh, that sword in his hand first. So here he is in his iconic pose this is the pose that inspired this figure to even be created. So I think it's able to uh, recreate that scene pretty well when he's down on the beach and he's kind of practicing fighting with his sword. Um, if you fiddle with this a little bit more, you might be able to get it even more screen accurate. Like maybe his sword needs to come down a little bit more or something like that. But because uh, I'm sure there are some people that will want to display this figure on their shelf in this exact pose. And I think... Super 7 has done a pretty good job of being able to accomplish that look. Now, as for the sword, I was able to wrestle it into his hand without heating it up. Um, there was enough give in his fingers that I could do that without much problem. As for the hands, um, I wasn't sure if they'd be easy to pop in and out, but they, they come out quite easily. So there you go. That's just a little peg like that. So you can switch from the open hand to the closed hand, you know, quite easily. So that was no problem. And so how does the sword look now that we've got him holding it? Is it too big, do you think? It's a pretty big sword, but he's a big guy, so I think he could probably handle it. Now again, if we bring in uh, comic Conan again, how big is his sword in comparison? So here are the two swords. So you can definitely see that this movie sword is, it's about a hilt bigger. Like if we put the blades, um, you know, the end of the blade next to each other, pretty much from here on. So it is a bigger sword and it's also like, it looks like a lot heavier sword. There's a lot more going on, but I still think it's, uh, you know, it's fine. I definitely have other figures in my collection that are carrying much larger and more cartoonish guns and swords and stuff. So I think this one's actually pretty reasonable. Now here is Conan with the alternate head, and since I was popping his head off anyway, I even put on the alternate, like, uh, necklace. So again, I don't really know the significance between the necklaces. I don't think it really matters. If I'm going to display him with one over the other, I'll probably go with this one, just because I think it's a little bit more interesting to look at. But uh, yeah, there's the head. And I think it looks good. It's the same, same deal as the other head, is that the color maybe doesn't match up. The neck is definitely more tan than the face. Um, I was kind of wondering if maybe the long hair would help to hide that a little bit more. And it doesn't. Like, you can still definitely see the contrast, but I don't think it's a, a big deal. That shouldn't be a reason to deter anybody from buying this figure. It's not that noticeable. So, uh, let's see. The hair hangs pretty far down his back, pretty much covering up that, that joint there. Now, as far as movement, like range of movement on the head, it's a little limited because you have to move all this hair, you know, the two pieces on the front and the back. So, yeah, he can't turn his head very much with his head on. Um, he can still look up a little bit. There's, there's really not a whole lot of movement. You can see about that much. Um, and, yeah, I'm really not sure, to be honest with you. I thought I thought for sure I was going to display him with this head, but the, uh, the other head has kind of grown on me. In just the short amount of time I've been playing with this figure but uh, yeah both are good and um, yeah overall I'm I'm pretty pleased with this figure uh, I am glad I picked him up even though he was a little pricey all of these super 7 ultimate figures are a little pricey 
considering, you know, it's just a six inch figure. Sure, he comes with a handful of, of accessories, but it wasn't a lot. You know, a couple extra hands, a sword, an extra head. You know, we get about that same amount of stuff with most Marvel Legends figures. And for me, here in Canada, most six inch figures like Marvel Legends, G.I. Joe Classified, Star Wars Black Series, those figures are 30 bucks. This guy here, now mind you, I did get him from a specialty shop instead of like Walmart or something. That's because figures like this aren't available at Walmart. But yeah, this guy cost me 70 bucks Canadian. So that's pretty steep considering I don't think he's any more exceptional than uh, any of those other six inch lines. But uh, you know, I guess maybe because Super 7 is a smaller, you know, manufacturer, that's, uh, that's what you gotta pay if you wanna get a cool Conan figure. And I definitely think this qualifies as a cool Conan figure. So since I said this was going to be a quick review, I should wrap this up. But here's just one more final shot where you can compare kind of the size of Conan with a couple other figures um, from Super 7. The type of figures that you might want to display this guy with. And here he is with a couple other figures in the same scale. So next to a G.I. Joe classified figure and a kind of standard Marvel Legends figure. Now... Sure, he's maybe a little bigger. The scale isn't perfect. He's especially bigger, noticeably bigger than the G.I. Joe. But considering that Conan is a part of the Marvel Universe these days, um, maybe you'll choose to display Conan with your Marvel Legends figures. And I think it actually works pretty good. They match up all right. So anyway, that's my review of Iconic Pose Conan. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button, subscribe, check out my other videos. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks.